Okay, everyone, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for coming, especially on the face of a mega telephone coming our way. Especially appreciated. My name is Santiago Paladino. I'm a software developer at OpenZeppelin. At OpenZeppelin, we perform security audits for decentralized systems, and we also build open source smart contact libraries and developer tools. But I'm not here today to share our work here. Uh, my co workers have done great work these past days sharing that. I'm here to talk about a personal project I undertook over a year ago. Uh, I wrote a book to onboard Web 2.0 developers to the space and on how to develop decentralized applications. Uh, the book, fortunately, has been published last week. You can head over there with this discount code and get it. Thank you. <laughs> And the thing is, while working on this, uh, well, I personally think that one of the best ways to learn something is to try to teach it. I, I also managed to squeeze a quote in Latin, which is awesome. Um, the best way to learn something is to actually try to research it, try to teach and share it with others. And one of the biggest insights I got from the book is that apps are actually much more tricky than they seem. Uh, there are many things that we take for granted that we assume that they are easy to develop. And when you start digging, you, you start to realize that it's not exactly that way. And to share that with you, I want to present a short challenge. Uh, basically, some very, very simple application, for instance, showing uh, the non-fungible tokens of a specific address, and see how it can become actually tricky uh, pretty soon. Uh, we'll go a little bit technical just for a couple of minutes, not many, it's a lightning talk after all, so bear with me. But the idea will be just to get the current tokens of the user, monitor for new ones, and that's it. Sounds simple, right? Uh, we'll assume we have two building blocks, this is an oversimplification of the standard, but for example, something that lets us know, okay, given address has these tokens, and an event to listen for new ones. Step one, listing the current tokens. Should be fairly easy, right? The user has received token A, token B, we just ask for the current tokens, we get the list with both, right? But what we don't get is when we receive uh, those tokens, when they were allocated to the, the particular address. Uh, for instance, token B could have received last block, which means it's not confirmed, it's subject to being removed, and it's not information we actually get. So if we want an accurate picture, we need to okay, query the state couple of blocks back, let's say half a dozen, one dozen blocks, depending on the number of confirmations. Um, but now we have a gap on the past six blocks, which we're not sure how to feel, maybe getting the past events, polling constantly to see if something has changed. But, but, okay, let's, let's leave that out for a second. Um, try to focus on the second problem. Uh, how we subscribe, how, to, how we see for new tokens. This is probably easy, uh, assuming we have a WebSocket connection to the node, not all nodes exposed one. Um, we can just issue a subscribe method, so from the current block onwards, we have notification on all the new transfers, all the new events for new tokens that the user receives. Well, hopefully from the current one, the subscription might get installed later, but that's yet another problem. So, okay, let's just focus on the subscription. Uh, the user receives two tokens, let's say token alpha, token beta. We get events for that. Pretty easy, we only need to display them on the user interface. Oh, there is a reorg. The subscription will also take care of this for us and will let us know, you know, token beta was removed due to the organization, token delta appeared instead. But this requires actually the subscription to be alive. Subscription is something that runs over WebSocket and HTTP connection. Remote connections break. They may actually break while the reorg is taking place which means the node loses the, loses the state of all the information it has been sending us, and we actually lose track that the reorganization happened, and we end up with a spurious version of the chain client side. So we may, then, we may end up displaying false information to the user. Again, this is a pretty edge case, but if connections break, and we lose, if we lose connectivity there, we are screwed. We can go on another approach, we can go back to basics, just polling, go with a simple algorithm that just requires checking block hashes continuously, seeing if, it, if they have changed at a given height, changing the block hash means a reorg, we can react to that, it means we need to undo all the previous events, so we also need to keep a mapping from block to, uh, from block to events. Again, don't want to go in depth, but it's a bit cumbersome. 
it's not definitely not as easy as installing a subscription. But actually, using this approach, we can also solve the six block window and a few other things. But uh, since I only have like five minutes, the, the point I wanted to convey and the thing I wanted to share with you is that these things are more difficult than we think. And if we start digging and we start looking for edge cases, for unstable connections, for reorganizations, for stuff that for stuff that is outside the happy path, things get carried pretty quickly. And uh, we need to be in the lookout for this. We need to do more work to have better client-side libraries, better support for handling for handling this. A uh, big shout out to the Ethereum JS Blockstream library out there, which handles exactly this case. And by the way, hardly anyone uses it. And especially we need better testing tools. I mean, it's really difficult to code an application that's going to be resilient to these situations if we cannot test it. There is no way for us to test a reorganization. There are hardly any tools for testing uh, spotty connections. We actually develop assuming that we'll have a guarantee, for instance, for a socket when we don't always do. So we need to make sure that our testing framework, the testing tools we use, accommodate for supporting all of these cases. So, uh, going back to the challenge I shared a couple of minutes before, I'm super interested in knowing how you would tackle it. I've created a, a thread on our forum. It would be great if you could join. Share your thoughts there. I mean, the polling approach I shared is only one option. And I'm super interested to know on how you guys would solve it. So, that's it. Thank you so much.